Good morning, everyone. Marvelous deeds. No. Maybe. Yes. Ah, marvelous deeds. Let's look at this Immaculate Conception and the question of it. So, and how it's really been a part of the church's tradition and unfolding. There's always uh, been some people that would question. You can see very clearly uh, the first foundation is our first reading with regards to original sin. Why do bad things happen to good people? The answer is original sin. And we, we live very much in God's permissive will. We are very aware of His perfect will. So I hope, and we've been talking about that for some time, I hope that it's getting uh, clear in our minds so that we can explain it and unfold it, the revelation of Jesus Christ. So God's perfect will is for us to be in communion with Him. God's perfect will is for us to discern His vocation for our lives. God's perfect will is to discern His will right now and answer it progressing down that path of glory and greatness that he has for each one of us. Okay, what's the glory of God? The person fully alive. So he wants all of us to be fully alive. That's his perfect will. The permissive will happens uh, because we have an order to live in that glory. We have to have free will. And indeed, our first parents receive created good in God, receiving free will, able to choose communion, to be like God with God, they did not choose that. And so disorder entered the world and into humanity. Disorder, death. And so uh, we have difficulties. Very often, so bad, something bad happens, it's not, well, I guess you can handle it because God doesn't give us anything that we can't handle, right? Wrong. Doesn't work that way. Okay. I'll just give you cancer and I'll just give you this situation and I'll give you... Does not work that way. Those things enter the world not through God but through humanity. And so, very important that we understand this disorder comes to us through humanity. Unfortunately, it was a situation where God wanted to give us what we needed to truly be like God. So, we have original sin. Mary is preserved from any original sin from the very moment of her conception. Now you say, how do we get that from the Scriptures? Well, one, you might say, I think that just because she said yes, that was when she received the cleansing of original sin. Well, that's not true because if you go back and you look at the Scriptures, the angel says, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Now that the Greek there is very, it's, it's not used in, uh, really in any, anywhere else in the Scriptures. And essentially what it's showing is that she is without any stain of sin. She hasn't said yes yet. She's just being greeted. So she already is without sin when the angel greets her. So it can't be because she said yes. Well, maybe it's just because she was really good. It does say that she had, you know, had found favor. No, that can't be because that would mean that she earned her salvation. And no one earns their salvation. Salvation only comes through Jesus Christ. It is 100% gift. Now, we have to unwrap it. So justification comes from God. She received it at the moment of her conception. So those two things are very helpful for us to understand in a theological way. But maybe more in a practical way, it's this. God wants to do marvelous works through you. Every single one of you. Husband, wife, 
grandparent, uncle, aunt, friend. Whatever state, maybe you've discerned your vocation already, maybe you have not. Maybe it's a great time, maybe it's a difficult time, or some time in between. Does not matter. He wants to do marvelous works in you. And I'm talking about marvelous works of love that will transform the world. No. Maybe. Yes. See, Mary said yes. I I don't know all the difficulties or how I could try and imagine what that would be like to be a 16-year-old who was betrothed back in that particular time. And then for her to be told that this is what's going to happen, I mean, it must have been mind-blowing. She's like, well, I don't, I don't have any relations with a man. How is this going to happen? I mean, let it be done unto me according to thy word. She says yes, even though she doesn't understand everything in front of her. What she does understand is that God is calling her to do this. Now, why was she preserved from the stain of original sin? Because she needed that in order to fulfill what God was calling her to do. Let me say that again. She was preserved from sin at the moment of her conception so that she could accomplish what God was calling her to do. He does that for each one of us as well. No matter if he is calling you to do something, he is giving you the grace to accomplish it. And so it will come back to us. When, at, at this time, uh, I always remember uh, the three other guys from seminary because uh, it was a challenging time thinking that we're hearing God calling us uh, and we're there. We all had opportunities outside the seminary with careers and, and, uh, and uh, some relationships. People had, had left long-term relationships because they had really been called to this. Saying yes with your vocation. Sometimes he's just calling you to to sacrifice something that, that you might want to hold on to. One of the guys uh, out of the four of us, his aunt passed away and he received you know, uh, some, some money, not a great amount of money, uh, but some, and he could have just held on to that. But instead, one of the things that he did, he, he, bought, he bought each of us out of the four the same vestment, a Mary investment, that we would be priests for Mary uh, that we remember our fraternity, our friendship in this vocation. And so somewhere uh, in the world, Father John Schnobrick, Father Joseph Crowley, and Father Greg Stowe are wearing the same vestment, offering the holy sacrifice of the Mass, and they, we, we band of brothers, are walking down this road together. And so I'm, I'm grateful that he said yes to let go a little bit of a money. Whatever it might be, God is giving you what you need to answer what he's calling you to do today. Now, maybe, yes, to the marvelous works 